New York, the Empire State. Nowadays, this almost always refers to just New York City, and why not? It's by far the largest metro area in the country, and while it may not be the capital of the United States, it's essentially the capital of the world. Its dense, pedestrian, and transit-based lifestyle, as well as its abundance of peak American architecture, makes New York the principal American city. But what people forget is that the Empire State once referred to the entire state. For 150 years, New York was the most populous state, and for much of that time, by quite the margin. Buffalo, Albany, Rochester, Syracuse, Troy, and Utica were all large and important cities relative to the entire United States at one time. All of this stemmed from New York's waterways, the Hudson and Genesee Rivers, and the Erie Canal. This system, which starts in New York City and funnels towards Lake Ontario and Lake Erie, was unbeatable in terms of trade, transport, and efficiency, connecting the region to Canada and the Midwest, putting all of the cities along these waterways in a prime position to be effective manufacturing and trading hubs. While we've talked about Buffalo on this channel before, the story of these other cities that make up upstate New York need to be known, because from this long period of success were the building of truly beautiful American cities. Just take a look. Real quick, I'm sure you've all noticed that now my videos are being sponsored, and I'd first like to thank you all for putting me in the incredible position of turning my passion into a growing business. I've just graduated from university and now disembarking into the real world, but rather than leave this channel behind, I've been given the opportunity to continue to do this and hopefully make a positive difference. And something I found out really quickly is that if you're using your personal phone number to close business deals, you're not just mixing work and play, you're sabotaging your chances of success. I've noticed that it makes me look amateur, and it's also very disorganized to have all of my streams of communication spread out over several apps. Let the sponsor of this video, Nextiva, cut this down to one app. Nextiva consolidates your business voice, texts, video meetings, and CRM inside of one app. You get seamless, personalized customer interactions across all channels. And you can do this even if you are currently running your business off your personal phone and your CRM is a spreadsheet. You don't need any tech experience. You just need to download their app and follow the easy setup. You can make this one change and your business will look as polished as a Fortune 500 company. And you'll be able to focus on closing and scaling. This is the year to level up your business and lower your costs. Go to trynextiva.com slash Alexander Rotmans or use the link down below in the description to get 50% off your plan. But now, all of this is gone. And these cities have been in major decline 
for decades. As has been the common story in this series, manufacturing has moved away from this part of the country and from the United States as a whole, leading to the economic decline of the region. While it wasn't all doom and gloom, such as Kodak remaining in Rochester until this day, what truly puts these cities out of America's collective memory was their physical wiping out. So much of the beauty that made these places destinations beyond their functionality has been lost due to the urban renewal of the mid-20th century that wrecked all of these places, with boring, characterless suburbia becoming the new normal. This is what took place. As I've said in this series before, of course cities and regions will rise and decline, and very rarely does any one place maintain its peak significance as the economy moves and civilization naturally expands and finds new destinations. But the nail in the coffin for these cities is not necessarily their loss of economic might, but that the physical memory of their greatness is gone. This is why preservation exists in the first place, because legacy and knowing our past is deeply important. It binds us more deeply into our city, state, and country, as well as inspire and educate ourselves on who we are and why. Now that so much of it is gone, these places have become known as boring or completely unknown. And even though there isn't anything necessarily wrong with improving and expanding, it has to be at the same quality as what came before it. And simply put, the way these cities once were, were far better, both aesthetically and systematically. Any of the achievements and beauty in these places are now gone too. Compare this to cities and towns that have maintained their beauty, and even if they no longer serve the great economic or functional purpose they may have had, they continue to serve an incredibly important role culturally and socially, as well as serve as the perfect platform to rise once again when the time comes. For example, Venice may no longer be the world's most powerful city, but its preserved beauty plays a significant role in the prevalence of Italian culture. America needs that too. But there are good signs for the cities of upstate New York. Rochester and now Syracuse have undergone some major highway removal in the last few years. The Syracuse one is currently just about underway, but Rochester's is completed. And while the buildings atop where the highway once was are boring, boxy, and modernist, this is still obviously a massive improvement over a highway and brings the city together, at least on the east side. And more projects like this, undoing the damage of urban renewal, now coming to Syracuse, is extremely exciting and brings hope to the rest of us 
that the seemingly unfixable damage of the mid-century is actually fixable and possible. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.